Okay, well today's topic um, in the parent education series is um, looking at uh, children's fine motor skill development. And so I titled it Fine Motor Fun, um, Helpful Ways to Support Your Child's Fine um, Motor Skill Development. So today we're just really gonna talk about um, initially how do our fine motor skills kind of develop um, from infancy on, and, um, and then what are just some um, fun ways in which you can um, play with your child um, through playful ways of um, targeting different fine motor skill um, development. Um, so our hands obviously serve us many different functions in life. Um, it allows us to reach for, um, reach for items, grasp items, carry items. Um, it allows for us to accurately release items and use our hands together functionally and also um, use tools, both household, so things like spoons, forks, toothbrush, and um, academic, things like a ruler, pencil, uh, scissors, those types of things. And it's just important to note that our hand skills don't develop in isolation. They're related to overall um, development, um, including our visual perceptual skills, our visual motor skills, so our eye-hand coordination. Um, our eyes drive our hands. If we're not visually attending to what we're doing, um, you know, our product is going to be um, impacted by that. Our sensory processing skills, so um, and the feedback that we get to our hands, so especially um, that tactile feedback that we get to our hands. Um, our cognitive skills and just overall cult cultural and social factors can impact on the development. So let's just start with the um, um, beginning at birth. We see more um, reflexive activity in the student or the child. Um, you might see that grasp reflex. So you place you know, a finger within the palm of the child's hand and you see them really grasp that item, but they can't yet release it. You're kind of having to pull the object out. Um, they're not able to really use their hands in space at all. They're just um, more um, here at, um, at their body. But then by the end of three months, you start to see that they are beginning to um, be able to um, visually scan their environment more. You might put them under um, a play set on their back and they're beginning to kind of be able to look at their arms. They're still not um, really able to purposefully grasp an item. They're still in that reflexive um, um, mode, but you'll see that they, um, when an object is placed in their hand, they still will sustain that grasp. Um, they begin to lift their head, like if you're doing that tummy time, you'll see that they begin to lift their head, but they're not yet like propping on their forearms. Within that four to six month period, you start to see that they will push up onto their extended forearms. They're developing better um, um, head control. They're beginning to maybe visually scan their hands whenever they're um, in that position. Um, you begin to see them being able to use more of like a palmer grasp, so um, grasping items between their um, whole, their fingers within their palm. Um, and they begin to kind of use their um, both hands together. They may begin to hold a bottle up to their mouth or um, when they're in sitting, they might have a toy and they play with it with both hands. By seven um, to nine months though, you begin to see they might begin to crawl. They're, they're able to extend up onto their forearms. They might be able to weight shift and weight bear where they're weight shifting onto one hand to reach for an item. Um, and crawling really helps us to um, develop what we call the arches of our hands, so um, which allows for um, the ability to either flatten your hand or to cup your hand. And that allows um, us to be able to pick up objects out of a variety of sizes. So it helps us with the efficiency um, in which we grasp objects. And you begin to see that they're um, using their fingers more within that grasp um, process. Then by about a year old, you begin to see more directed reaching. So they see something, they're actually using their eyes to reach for it. They're um, using their, you know, outside of their, um, just their body, they're reaching out to a surface. You might actually begin to see a hand preference develop at that early of an age. Um, they're using their hands together more in, um, in a coordinated fashion. They have a purposeful release. You're seeing them point to items and that pincer grasp begins to develop. So when we say pincer grasp, we mean um, that index finger to thumb to pick up smaller items. Um, so Cheerios on a tray, something like that. 
And then really within that, those toddler and preschool years, it's just looking at a lot of refinement of movements. So um, you'll see refinement of grass patterns. They're um, using their hands together more functionally to engage in more complex play. Um, and you're seeing the development of what we call in-hand manipulation skills. And those are things like being able to move items from, um, that's just coordinated movement just within the hand. So being able to take an item and move it from your palm out to your fingertips, fingertips to palm, shifting an item within your finger. So if I pick up a pencil, I can move my fingers down to the tip of it. And then also being able to rotate items. So opening a container or flipping my pencil over to a race and then flipping it back over without having to use my other hand. Sometimes you'll see kiddos, if, you're, if you notice that they don't have really good in -hand manipulation skills, you see a lot of compensation strategies. So they might um, place the item into their other hand in order to um, complete the task. They might drop it on the table in order to pick it back up. Or they might use like their chest in order to move the object to get it out to their fingertips to put it in, instead of just being able to do that um, all within their fingers. And really, in-hand manipulation skills are needed for those higher level tasks, things like managing our fasteners on our clothing, so buttoning, zipping, um, and also for um, more refined tool use, so um, pencil and scissor use. So now I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about um, how, what activities can you do, um, things that might be both um, commercially based out there, different games or things, um, and also just some homemade items, things that you can use from different containers you have to materials around the house to use to promote um, a child's fine motor development. And first is just really developing that shoulder and core strength. Um, they always talk about how our development really moves from proximal to distal, and that means that we have to have a stable and strong core in order to then be able to have good refined movement distally or out here. So we want to do a lot of things to promote our um, upper extremity strength. So that includes really giving your, um, your baby, your toddler, a lot of that good tummy time. But even as a preschooler, get down on the floor with your child. Play in, have them um, you know, bear weight through their forearms or up on their extended arms to do things like coloring, to play a game, to complete a puzzle. That'll give them that really good input to their shoulders and um, build strength. Um, animal walks, things like, hey, um, Jessica, go get your shoes. I want you to crawl like a crab when you go and get your shoes. And that will allow them to, again, bear weight and build some of that strength throughout their upper body. Um, playing tug of war, so using a sheet, a pillowcase, a blanket, um, and just going back and forth, that resistive activity with your child. Working at vertical surfaces. Here at the preschool, we do a lot of this. So we might um, attach different toys to the wall, a pegboard, a puzzle, um, a, um, a piece of construction paper and have the child put stickers on it, um, a large chalkboard or dry erase board if you have that at home, or an easel. So standing at a vertical surface because then you're working on all of that good shoulder um, strength as you're putting things, uh, as you're reaching above um, as you're reaching out in order to complete the activity. Um, different yoga poses. Here our teachers use a lot of a program that's called um, Yogarilla. And um, they have different cards that they'll project onto um, their smart board. And then the students can practice um, assuming those different poses for a period of time. Um, I know there's a lot of different apps and videos and um, things out there that you can also um, look at and do with your child. Um, playing different games. Um, the one I really like is Twister, which is an old one. But um, spinning, the, um, spinning it and coming to a certain color, having to um, differentiate between my left hand, my right hand, um, looking at different colors, and just assuming those different positions while maintaining your balance. Um, and being active um, at the playground. Take your kids to play, um, hanging from the monkey bars, climbing up surfaces, um, rock walls, different things like that are just, again, going to build that overall shoulder um, and upper body and core strength, which is then going to help with their fine motor skills. And here are just some different examples um, that we already talked about in picture form. 
We don't often think about elbow and forearm rotation, but it is very important um, as we look at some of those higher level skills that we need. Um, being able to have kind of what we call a neutral forearm position, so um, here, um, is really important for things like engaging the zipper on my coat, um, buttoning, um, being able to, um, to write in with a neutral forearm is all um, very important. And so sometimes what we see are more, um, um, in some of our children with developmental delays is they use a lot of what we call pronation or a thumbs down position. And so we wanna work with them on being able to do what we call pronation and supination activities or forearm movement in order to get that overall neutral forearm. So um, simple things that you can do to work on that would be um, like flipping cards um, so or like playing memory games, flipping cards, um, coins from, okay, you have them all on the tail side. I, wanna, I want you to flip them so I can see the head side. Um, different coins that you could put like stickers on or letters, things like that, that you could have them flip over and turn, um, just turning pages in a book, um, scooping activities, even taking measuring cups into the bathtub, having them, you know, take um, a scoop of water, pour it into a container. Um, I love the different, um, the stacking cups games where you can, um, you know, take them all out and then you could even have them practice turning them over, stacking them back up. Um, playing with a slinky is great for those kinds of um, activities and um, hiding things. So say, okay, I'm going to put something in your palm, hide it, don't show it to me. Okay, what did you find? And then having them reveal it. Um, so just working on um, that forearm rotation movement. Then we come to just kind of that overall hand strength. What are different things that you can do um, to work on um, actual strengthening within the hands. And some of the things that, um, many of these things your um, children do have opportunities to do while they're here at the preschool, but the more reinforcement that you can provide at home would be great. Um, things like um, the ball popper toy, so squeezing it to take the ball out. Um, some of the um, squirt guns would be great. Um, Theraputty, this was just one that I bought on Amazon. Um, hiding things within the Theraputty, having your child use their fingers in order to find those items. Um, clothespins um, are great. There's so many different things that you can do with clothespins um, that are even academically um, based. Um, a lot of times if we're working with a student on name identification or learning letters in their name or learning to spell their name, being able to, um, uh, matching the letters in their name using the clothespins is a wonderful activity. You just wanna make sure that when they're doing that, that you um, are promoting them using that three finger grasp in order to attach the clothespin rather than using like their whole hand because that kind of defeats the purpose. It's also a really good bilateral activity because they have to hold it while they're doing, um, doing it as well. Um, tongs and tweezers, um, again, these are, um, you can easily find these through educational stores um, or on Amazon. Um, Miss Jessica, one of the teachers here, just showed me this one today, which I love. It's a little, she said it's, it's a little hand. They have mittens, different things like that. Um, again, wanting to make sure that the child is holding it, not using all of their fingers, but just with a three finger grasp. And you can e easily have them pick up items, sort by color, by fruit, by shapes, whatever objects you're using um, in order to, um, to sort. Um, catch with a Velcro mitt. Um, I know our PT uses this a lot. This is a great resistive activity, um, which would work on hand strengthening. This was a Halloween one with a spider, but they also have ones with the Velcro ball where you're having to pull, you're having to throw to a target, you're having to catch, um, and that's a great way. And then squeezing out sponges or helping with chores. There's so many great things that you can um, have kiddos do to not only build independent skills, but also to work on strengthening. Things like um, they sell at the dollar store, small little laundry baskets, loading up your child's laundry from the, um, from the dryer and having them carry that upstairs, or using that laundry basket to put all their blocks in and then put it up onto a high shelf. Um, having them wipe the table after dinner is another great um, strengthening activity. So all of those um, chores are um, also a wonderful way to work on your child's hand skills. I also love the, um, <laughs> for finger strengthening, the packing material. 
I got this at Drug Mart in a big uh, roll of it, and my young kids who are 12 still love to annoy me by, by doing that. Um, I guess it's how long you can take it. Um, next, we come to um, bilateral coordination skills. So bilateral coordination skills are really important in terms of um, the development of uh, hand preference. Um, so it's differentiating your um, stable hand or the hand that you're going to sta stabilize activities with when, say, writing or cutting, um, and your dominant hand that you are going to always use for tool use. Um, there's kind of two different types of bilateral coordination activities. The first one are those that um, kind of require the hands to perform the same motion. Most of these are resistive in nature, um, and most of them are pulling and pushing type activities. Um, there's so many great ones that are commercially available that Learning Resources has some wonderful um, options. I love the little resistive popsicles that they have. They also have the little um, cupcakes that you pull apart and you can match by shape and color. Um, I know they have um, the keys that you can insert the key and turn it to unlock the, um, the lock. Um, there's um, like eggs that you can buy through there that again you match pulling and pushing together. Um, but you could do that with um, simple Easter eggs, you know, um, opening, these are a dollar at the store, hides objects within them, and be able to push them back together. Um, using a rolling pin and cookie cutters, roll out that Play-Doh and use the cookie cutter to make different things are um, also fun things that you can do at home. There's lots of different pop beads that are out there. Initially, Kiddos might start with ones that are larger and less resistive, and then they move to ones that are much smaller and really only use um, finger skills versus whole hand movements. Um, Legos of all different sizes um, is another great one that you can use for, so again, these would be activities where your hands are performing the same motions. Then we move to those activities that require one hand to stabilize the activity and one hand to perform the activity. And sometimes you see kids, they fluctuate. They might switch hands depending upon um, if they have that role um, hand dominance established yet or not. But different things that we do here at the preschool include, um, you know, again, commercially available items like um, putting the keys onto a key ring. The nuts and bolts are a great one. Um, I love, I was saying, I got these at um, Marshalls. They're much cheaper there than online or um, at different toy stores. The cutting fruit, where you're holding the fruit or the bread with one hand and using a tool in order to cut it apart. Um, they have it for pizza as well. Um, any type of stringing activities, so using a lace to string beads, um, string popcorn, or, or um, um, what am I thinking of? Pasta, um, different things like that that you might have around the house. Um, cl the clothespin activities are great. Another fun one to do at home is the tennis ball game where you um, take just an old tennis ball from the garage, you cut a hole into it, and you have the child practice squeezing it open, which again is a strengthening activity. It's working on the arches of the hand, and it's a good bilateral activity because then you can take um, items and you can feed the, um, the tennis ball. And this is a great way to work on in-hand manipulation too. So instead of just picking it up from the table, you could say, okay, pick up two of them, have them in your palm. Okay, now bring the yellow one out. Feed him the yellow one. They have to hold on to the pink one without dropping it, and then put the yellow one into his mouth. So again, it's just a fun way to work on it. Um, paper clips is another good one. This would be for probably that four-year-old, three, four-year-old um, range. Um, kind of similar to the clothespins. It's just another way to, um, you know, you can match by color and um, hold with one hand and attach with another hand. Okay. And I think I just have some activities again. Oh, and I love this one. Toilet, toilet paper rings. Um, you can just take your old toilet paper rings from home, um, cover it with a piece of construction paper, and then take the rubber bands and match them. So again, a great bilateral activity. Hold it with one hand and attach the rubber band with the other hand. Crossing midline of the body. 
Um, this is another one that's very important and it develops throughout the preschool years. And it's important because it leads to higher level skills such as reading and writing. We read and we write from left to right. We have to cross the page with our eyes. We have to cross the page when we're writing. Um, and so it's important for us to um, develop these skills within the preschool years um, for those higher level skills that they will um, be doing in elementary school. And some of the things that you can do to work on these skills would be um, having your child do things like windmills. So the old fashioned, um, you know, taking my right hand and crossing over my body to my left hand and then doing it the opposite way. You'd be so surprised at how many students you see doing this because they really cannot cross that midline of the body. And one of the tricks that I often use when I'm initially teaching this to a student is stickers. So having a pink sticker on my right hand and a pink sticker on my left foot, and then a blue sticker on this hand and a blue sticker on that foot, and then just having them match those. And then fading that cue as they um, gain more success with it. Cross crawls is a similar thing where you're taking um, one elbow and moving it to the opposite leg, crossing the body. Um, again, wiping, um, you know, wiping a table, wiping off or erasing a chalkboard is great. Um, lazy eights is a good one. So if you have, I should have brought a marker, but if you have like a nice um, vertical board, um, drawing a large figure eight in a horizontal position, will have the child, um, again, be crossing the midline um, of their body. Um, bean bag or pickup game. So if you have the child sit on the floor or on a therapy ball or in a chair and you place items all around, um, oftentimes I'll touch the hand, okay, I want you to use this hand. Pick up the purple bean bag, and then they have to reach across their body and pick it up and maybe put it in or make a basket, something like that. Um, and then reaching across your body to put items like into a container, similar things, so reaching across and then um, you can also do it with something like this, where you have the items that spread out on a table, you move the, um, the, the container or what you're wanting the child to put in, um, to different areas and having them reach to, um, to put in. And then we come to those activities that will promote um, grasp development. So th um, that what we call like a three finger or a pincer grasp, um, which will then help with things like um, cutting or with holding our uh, writing utensil um, as we move into pre-writing and handwriting skills. And so some of the things, again, are fun commercially available um, items. Many of the things that we use for our bilateral activities will also work for um, promoting that three finger grasp um, of items. The bubble wrap is another good one. A fun game is perfection, and you may not even be setting it with a time, you know, a time limit or actually playing the game in which, you know, in the in the way that it's intended to, but just even having the items out and having the child pinch the little knob of the piece and putting it and matching it into the puzzle board. Hi Ho Cheerio is another one that's great. Connect Four is great. Um, and I've actually adapted um, the Connect Four boards where you might put um, stickers on the pieces and have them match the stickers in, within the rows. Um, just again, to kind of, um, if they're not really into playing the game of Connect Four yet, um, making it at their level. Um, another good one is if you have um, an ice cube tray and placing their snack items within the small containers of, um, or the small areas of the ice cube tray and then having them pinched in order to get the, um, their snack. Putting snacks within containers is awesome. Um, having to like do that extra step to open something um, incorporates not only the bilateral skill, but then reaching in and taking those items out. Um, these were um, soup, wonton soup containers that I had from Chinese food. Just cutting a hole in the top and having small coins that they can push through um, or craft sticks, similar thing. It's resistive um, that you're wanting to make sure they pinch in order to put them on, small pegs. Um, so there's all kinds of different things. It's just wanting to make sure that when the child is doing it, you're wanting to make sure that they're doing it the right way. So correct them. If, you've, if you're finding that they're um, using all of their hands together, say, oh, you know, make sure that you're just using these fingers. And sometimes an easy trick is taking a simple fabric ball like this and having the child hold on to that with their last two fingers. So take their fourth and fifth finger against their palm and then oh, hold on to that while they're completing the activity. And then that way they only have these three fingers available in order to complete the activity. So I just wanted to give some um, 
some background um, to parents so that they kind of understand what the um, expectations are in terms of our pre-writing and handwriting skills at the preschool level. Um, both from a grasping of the writing utensil and also um, what is kind of expected um, in terms of those pre-writing and handwriting skills. Um, initially, at age two, this is where you begin to see maybe a child become interested in something like coloring. Um, and you tend to see that at that point, they're still using their whole hand in order to hold that, that pencil. Um, then it might kind of um, move into something more like this, where you see them still kind of with that, what we call pronating our hand, and we might extend our index finger, but we're still holding it with all of our fingers against our palm. By the age of three, we would want a child to be able to, um, when they see a picture of a vertical line, a horizontal line, and a circle, you would want them to be able to copy those shapes. And by the end of three and beginning of four, you would want them to be able to intersect two lines in order to be able to make a cross. Um, at age four is where you begin to see a child, hopefully, um, developing more of what we call that tripod grasp or that um, three finger grasp. So there's four grasps that are considered to be functional um, through research and that would be your regular, um, your tripod grasp or what they call a quadrupod grasp. So having two fingers on top against the thumb or with the thumb across um, the utensil both ways. Um, so those are kind of the four that are considered to be functional. And at age four, you're still gonna see a child use their whole arm um, in order to make those movements. They're not yet having those in-hand manipulation skills fully developed in order to just use those isolated movements of the fingers. That comes more at age five and into six, going into kindergarten, where you see their writing smaller and within designated areas. Um, and so that is typically how um, our grasp should develop. Um, by age five, we would want to see the child, when they're writing, having their forearm stabilized on the table in that neutral position. We want to make sure that they're stabilizing the paper with that helper hand. And they should have most of those pre-writing strokes in place that are needed for letter formation. So um, those um, vertical line, horizontal line, those diagonal lines, circle, square, cross, and uh, triangle. So incorporating the diagonal lines together. Usually by the end of kinder, or usually by the end of preschool too, most of our students are able to um, write their name. And that would be here at the preschool, we encourage um, using the uppercase letter for the first letter in their name and then lowercase letters for the remaining letters in their name. Um, and um, because that is what is expected within kindergarten. Our, um, our school here this year, I just wanted to be able to show parents some of the activities that um, your children are being exposed to this year. Um, the preschool adopted what's called the Handwriting Without Tears curriculum, and that is a developmentally based um, multi-sensory handwriting curriculum that is specifically geared towards um, preschool age students. And it uses a lot of different multi-sensory manipulatives in order to not only teach uh, letter uh, formation, but also um, just learning of letters, um, that visual memory of letters. And so some of the activities that your child is being exposed to, um, there's lots of songs and finger plays that go along with it to not only um, build your um, fine motor skills, but just to learn the manipulatives and learn letters. Um, so initially a child is um, given a, um, a visual model of the letter and they're using their wooden sticks. Um, they're learning the names for the sticks, big line, little line, big curve, little curve, and then all of the letters of the alphabet are based on those four strokes. So initially they may build the letter um, using the wooden sticks onto the model. And then once they master that, then they're gonna, you're gonna say, oh, show me a B, build a B for me. And they will build the B on the mat. You'll see that most of the materials have this smiley face in the upper left-hand corner. And that is a visual cue for students to know that I start my letters at the top. Um, a lot of times we see poor habits form where kids are writing a lot of their letters from bottom to top and we want to encourage, there's a lot of songs within the program that top, uh, talk about how our letters, where do our letters start? They start at the top. And so this is just a small visual cue to help kids remember that. Most all of the letters start at that left side. There's a few center starters and so that those are a little bit of the outliers um, that you'll see. So then they build the letters on, um, on the mat from memory. 
Um, the program also works a lot on drawing skills. Um, they have a character that's called Matt Man, and um, the, our kids have really had fun with building Matt Man. They build him um, using manipulatives on the floor, and then they practice drawing him, and it helps with drawing a person. Um, and then within the workbooks, they work a lot on um, just illustrating um, some of the pictures that go along with the, um, the letters that they're working on. So it works on coloring skills too. Um, another activity within the program is called Rolado. So um, students use Play-Doh, which you could easily um, do at home, and they roll out the um, they roll out the Play-Doh. Again, a great bilateral skill, uh, hand skills, building the arches of the hands, and then they attach the Play-Doh to the letter on the um, on the board. Um, again, you could take that letter off then and have them build it from memory. Um, these, these same items work on what's called the stamp and see screen. Um, again, putting that on there, they use um, small little uh, manipulatives to really work on that three finger grasp, um, grasping the materials um, correctly. And you can practice tracing and then ultimately copying the letters. And the last one they do is what's called the wet dry try. Um, which again is giving a child multiple opportunities to work on um, forming the letters um, either within their name or letters as they're introduced within the curriculum. So the adult would, using the small chalkboard, the adult would, um, would initially write the letter. Then the student takes a small tiny sponge, again focusing on that three finger grasp and tracing over the letter the correct way. Um, so, you know, big line down, little curve, little curve, they wet it, then they take a small paper towel, they dry it using that same motion, and then they take a small tiny piece of chalk and they try it. So that was three different opportunities to practice that same letter formation. Then you could ex extend the activity by doing what we call rainbow writing. So you could take then, oh, let's make a rainbow with letter B. Okay, let's use yellow. Okay, let's use pink. Let's use purple. And again, giving them multiple, multiple opportunities to build that motor memory for forming the letters within their name. So that is just some of the activities that your child is getting exposure to within the Handwriting Without Tears program. Other ways that you can practice working on um, handwriting through multi-sensory ways would it include things like, um, if you're not real big on <laughs> having messes at home, which I understand, sometimes um, kind of confining it to a tray is a great way. Um, you can use a lot of different mediums. So um, taking a cookie tray that you might have at home or a small um, plastic tray like this, you can use shaving cream, you can use um, cornmeal, sand, hair gel, pudding, any of those types of things. Um, and then having the child um, form the letter within those different multi-sensory um, mediums. Um, a paint bag is another one, which I actually made one, but I forgot to bring it in because it's <laughs> <laughs> the paint smelled so bad yesterday. Um, so filling just a Ziploc bag with um, finger paint seems to work the best because it's a little bit thicker. You could also add some glue to the paint in order to make it thicker. Um, but again, you could then trace the letter within the paint, within the bag, um, and then have the child erase it and then practice a different letter. Um, so a paint bag is a great way that you can work on it without it being messy. Rainbow writing we talked about, um, that would just be taking multiple colors of you know, chalk, markers, crayons, and having the child go over that multiple times. Um, tracing um, on paper over, um, you could put sandpaper underneath the paper, or I love using these, these are bumpy boards. Um, this is just a, um, a sewing board that you can get at Joanne Fabrics or um, Michaels put the paper over top of it and it just provides additional sensory feedback whenever you're practicing um, your pre-writing strokes or um, letters of the alphabet. Um, Magna doodle or you can make your own roll of dough letters at home using Play-Doh. So those are just some different um, ways in which you can work on um, building your um, child's uh, pre-writing and handwriting skills. And really just focusing on making sure that they are holding that writing utensil correctly. Um, I recommend always um, breaking crayons and breaking chalk. I know some people don't like that, but it really, you can't hold a one inch piece of chalk using all of your fingers against your palm. So um, it's really a great way to promote using 
that functional grasp in order to hold something. Also using um, a small golf pencil or lottery pencil, um, go to your local drugstore or your, you know, where you do the lottery and take a few of those pencils and bring them home. Sometimes putting just a simple visual cue about one inch up from the tip is a great way to show a student where they need to actually hold the utensil, especially if you have students that are holding it really high, which then causes them to bring their forearms up and um, not have a lot of control whenever they're writing. So just a simple visual cue is a great way to show them where to hold it. And finally today, just talking about scissor skill development. I evaluate a lot of students that come in at the age of three and have really never had exposure to using scissors at home. And many of our assessment tools actually um, uh, look at or evaluate a student um, and their scissor skills at the age of two and three. So it's hard to evaluate them when they've never had exposure to using them. So I encourage you to give your child um, exposure to using scissors at home. Um, it's definitely a, a supervised activity, but it can be very fun. There's many different child, um, child size scissors out there. And I think if you sit down with your child and work with them um, on these skills, um, you'll see a lot of progress in this area. Initially, you would just be working with your child on how to hold scissors properly. Um, so the proper way to hold scissors would be to have your thumb in the small hole and your uh, middle finger and ring finger in the large hole and your index finger sits below the bottom. Um, you're gonna wanna approach the paper with what we call a thumbs up position. Um, so having your thumb directed up to the paper and that goes the same with um, how you're holding, um, holding the paper in a thumbs up position. Some easy tricks that you can do to help students um, learn how to um, hold their scissors correctly. One would just be do an outline. Do a simple outline of the pair of scissors, put it next to your child's dominant hand, have the child match the scissors to the outline, and then be able to pick them up and hold them. Um, another way early on would just be to hold the scissors in midline and have the child approach it. It's a lot easier than you know having them in different orientations on the table and having them try to pick them up and figure out how to put them on. If your child picks them up and puts them on incorrectly, correct them. Um, say, mm, is that really how you hold your scissors? How do we hold them? And help them figure out um, how to do that. Another great one is googly eyes. Um, putting two little googly eyes at the top, um, again, um, helps them with uh, visually see, you know, um, if I'm using that thumbs up position. So if they're using a thumbs down position, oh, can you see the eyes? Oh, nope. And then um, cueing them to turn it upright. Um, typically, children move from um, snipping at the age of two, so you know, just using simple strips of paper and having them try to snip through them. Um, you can also do this with straws or with Play-Doh, rolling that Play-Doh out into a long line and having them snip that. Then they move to cutting a, a straight line. Sometimes visual cues, again, with stickers are great. Uh, green means stop or go, red means stop having them cut up, make continuous cuts to cut up and stop at a designated area. Then we move on to curves and then to simple shapes. Um, on Pinterest, there's so many fun different activities that you can um, do to promote um, cutting skills. Um, you can go to your local, these were from Home Depot yesterday, um, and these paint chips are great ways. They have a natural line built into them that you can cut. Um, and I think kids have fun with that. Um, one of the teachers here, Ms. Terry, found this on Pinterest where you're giving the, again, these are made out of toilet rolls. Um, you're giving him a haircut. It's resistive uh, in nature because it's a thicker material and you can cut his hair to work on snipping. Um, if you're seeing, sometimes we see kids where they're um, cutting and you see their forearms way up here. And so we wonder how do we get their forearms back down? Um, a fun, easy way to do that is to have them try to hold something under their arm. Don't drop the folder. Don't drop the folder while you cut. So they can try to hold it while they're cutting and then that way they don't have what we call those flying forearms. 
Sometimes too, kids you'll see, they try to um, cut with it on the table. They move it, instead of holding it, they try to cut it on the table. And simply moving them away from the surface is a good way to do that because then it forces them to have to hold it within their hands. Um, another fun way to work on just for kids that have a, um, trouble with, um, with turning the paper efficiently is taking just a simple piece of cardboard, so a lot of those Amazon boxes that you're getting this time of year, and just putting different either stickers or shapes, letters, different things like that around it, and with their helper hand, have them try to um, move to the different shapes on the wheel. So, oh, okay, go to the heart. And so this is actually called shifting. It's one of our in-hand manipulation skills. And that's just a great way for them to work on stabilizing and turning the paper. So I hope that you learned some different things today about how you can help to promote your child's um, scissor skills, handwriting skills, grasping skills, crossing midline, using their hands together. Um, I would just encourage you to play with your children, get them involved in a lot of different activities, get them off of the iPads and I, um, iPhones, and really get them involved with manipulatives and activities in order to promote their fine motor skill development that's going to help them um, through the learning process. So thank you for joining me today.